So I confess while lockdown's happening, I've been getting into bed with some other camera brands. Um, Canon with the EOS R first, and now Fuji with the X-T4. My Sony's over here thinking it's the end of our relationship. Regardless though, I've been using X-T4 for about a week now. I've taken it out on a professional shoot and a couple of walks. And I just wanted to give my thoughts in one of these one week reviews. Is it the best APS-C mirrorless camera out there? And is it gonna replace my Sony's? Let's get into it. Obviously to really get to know a camera, you have to use it on a lot of shoots for an extended period of time. I've only used it for a week, so this is more like a short time review. I'll also look at it from a video perspective because I'm mainly a videographer, but I did take a couple of photos with it as well. And that leads me to the first awesome new feature on this camera, and that is the movie and still switch on the top of the camera. This is Fuji's way of saying this is a serious video camera, which I think the mirrorless market lacks at the moment um, in Canon and Sony. Yes, they've got video features, but they're not screaming this is a video camera. Whereas Fuji, by putting this switch in, are saying that they're serious about video. The settings also change depending on which mode you're in, um, which just makes it a more streamlined experience, streamlined experience um, and it's much better for those video professionals. And talking of professionals, there's now dual SD card slots. I wouldn't buy a camera without dual SD card slots now. Um, an SD card of mine has never failed, but it is something that's a good fail safe for professional shoots. Apart from that, the body remains largely unchanged from the Fuji X-T3. It's still that classic camera look, still got the manual dials on the top. Um, but I've set all of them to auto, so now I control my shutter speed, aperture and ISO through the scroll wheels. Um, I like that I can do that, and all I have to do to change between aperture and ISO is to click the scroll wheel down, um, and it changes what that scroll wheel controls, which is a really nice touch. I also did a video on the Fuji X-T3, which I'll put up here somewhere and down below in the description, so you can check that out. I probably would have preferred the silver version of this, um, just because part of the, the style of this camera is it's that classic look, but the black one was the only one available to hire at the time. But the biggest change here is that flippy screen. Yeah. But the biggest change here is that flippy screen. Uh, this is obviously awesome for situations like this, when I'm filming myself, I just need to check myself out. Obviously it's great for vlogging, the screen's easily accessible um, when you're using the gimbal so you can touch the focus. Um, and it's generally quite good for photos when you need to get in weird positions. Let's say you want to take a portrait photo and you can just hold the camera like that, look down at the screen. I think that flippy screens need to be standard in mirrorless cameras now. So I apologise to the photographers that don't like it, uh, but that's my opinion. The biggest difference between the Fuji X-T4 and the A7 III I'm using now is that the X-T4 does have a crop sensor which is APS-C. Um, it's 1.5 times crop I believe um, in comparison to full frame. And all this really means is that you have to open up the aperture a little bit to get the same depth of field. But the APS-C sensor does mean the camera can be smaller and lighter and also the lenses can be smaller too. Internally a lot of the video specs are very similar to X-T3. I mean, come on Sony, Fuji have now been doing 4K60 for two generations of this camera, so what are you doing? Yes, there is a 1.18 times crop in 4K 60 frames, um, which is not ideal, and I really wish they could have fixed it um, after the same crop in the X-T3, but they didn't. It's not a deal breaker, I wouldn't say. I really didn't notice it most of the time, but that crop is there. Okay, so now I've waved it around in my hand enough. Let's switch to the Fuji X-T4 to film this while I talk about the video quality. Okay, so now we're on the Fuji. Um, I can see myself in the flip screen, which is amazing. So sorry if I keep looking over there. Um, this is what I use normally on my a7 III to connect my phone to, um, so I can see myself while I'm recording myself. So that is a little bit of a workaround. We are filming in 4K at 25 frames per second uh, on the Eterna picture profile. So honestly, the video quality out of these cameras is incredible. The sharpness is amazing. The colors are great and so much better than the Sony's in my opinion. The 10 bit recording also means that you can add a bit of color to it without it falling apart, which is really nice. And again, this is something that Fuji have done for two generations now where Sony is still not, a, not enabling us to record in that 10 bit format. You can choose between different picture profiles and I always shoot in a Turner just because the colors look really nice um, it allows a little bit of room for grading but it still looks great out of the box. But if you're into it there's also F-Log if you want that um, extra bit of dynamic range 
um, and it still grades, grades quite nicely. In the settings, you also get the option to view F-Log uh, once it's already been color corrected uh, so that you don't have to guess the exposure, which is a really nice feature. There's also a high frame rate mode at 240 frames per second. And although it's a slight degradation in quality, um, it still looks really good. And I'd say it's still usable for most sort of professional work. Autofocus is one thing that attracts me to these cameras um, using the Sony a7 III for quite a while. I do have quite high standards when it comes to this and for the most part the Fuji does have really good autofocus. It's not quite as consistent or reliable as the Canon or Sony as you saw earlier when it took a while to focus on my face but generally the autofocus is fast, it's snappy and the eye and face detection works really really well. I keep looking over to see if it's still working but it's still tra like tracking my eye no matter where I go which is quite nice. The only problem is sometimes it's too quick. It's like that employee who's so eager to impress, he does so much work, ends up doing it so quickly that he does it wrong. And what I mean by this is if you set a focus point, for example, and something goes in front of it for even a millisecond, then the camera will snap to that thing that's gone in front of it. If you use Sony cameras often, you'll know that the camera almost thinks for a second, is this gonna stay in frame for long enough to focus on? Um, and so you don't end up with that really snappy focus from one thing to another uh, if something goes in front of frame. I hope that makes sense. You can change the autofocus settings to make it faster or slower. I've got it at the slowest settings, but it still does this for me. Um, but overall, the phase section autofocus is very reliable, very consistent um, and well worth it. I've brushed over a lot of these features because although they're great, um, they're very much similar to the Fuji X-T3, which I've already covered in another video. But the one thing I did say about the X-T3 is the deal breaker for me was that there was no IBIS. Um, this is not a deal breaker for everyone, and I did say that before, um, but that was the main reason why I didn't invest in the X-T3 or the Fuji system at that point. Well, now Fuji have added it, um, which is great news. And for the most part, it's really, really good. This is the first time that a Fuji APS-C camera has had IBIS inside it, um, and they've done pretty well with it. I can't tell you how grateful I am to have IBIS, um, especially when doing handheld work at weddings. I don't always want to use a gimbal or a monopod, sometimes I run around handheld, and this is really, really useful. Sony's IBIS is questionable, um, it's not that much better than not having it to be honest, but Fuji's does seem a little bit better. Okay, it's not perfect, it does fight you sometimes when you're trying to do movements, um, but again, this is the first iteration, and I really hope they improve the algorithm uh, in future firmware updates to make these sort of things a lot smoother. There's also digital image stabilization, which crops in further, but does add that extra bit of stabilization for basic shots. If you use it for more complicated shots though, you'll notice some artifacts in the corners and things um, where that digital stabilization is sort of trying to catch up a little bit. As this is probably the main new feature of the X-T4 compared to the X-T3, especially for video shooters, I'm gonna be doing um, a separate video just focusing on the stabilization of this camera, um, comparing all the different modes and seeing whether it's actually beneficial to have this uh, for handheld work and gimbal work. So if that's something you wanna see, then do hit that subscribe button down below. Lens-wise, I rented out the 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4, and the 16 millimeter f1.4. The 18 to 55 is great, it's really small, it's versatile, it's got the image stabilization built in, um, so it's good for all round use, and particularly for travel, I'd say, as well. And the 16 millimeter 1.4, obviously having that 1.4 aperture is great, especially when shooting with an APS-C camera. So that was really good. The one thing I did notice though is the focus motors are quite loud. So in a quiet room, you might be able to hear it from an external microphone. I think there's a little bit of work to be done on Fuji's lens side um, for hybrid photo video shooters. But generally, if you wanna find a focal length, you'll be able to find it on this system. I took a few photos as well, and I'm not a photographer by any means, but I know that it was quick, the shutter speed was dead quiet, um, it was great to be able to pick those profiles as well in photo mode, and generally it was a good experience. The IBIS means you can shoot longer shutter speeds as well, without worrying too much um, about handheld shake. So, with all that said, is the Fuji X-T4, I'm still carrying this lens for some reason. So is the Fuji X-T4 worth your hard-earned cash money? Is it gonna replace my Sony? I'm gonna jump into bed with Fuji and ditch the Sonys. The answer is yes, um, and maybe a little bit. Let's ignore all future rumors and cameras for now and focus on what we've got right now. The Fuji X-T4 is the best APS-C mirrorless camera on the market right now in terms of features. Yes, we've got the Sony A6600, which has the great autofocus tracking capabilities in video, but the X-T4 does have 4K60, 
Um, it has slow motion, 240 frames per second. It has a flippy screen, it has 10 bit. Um, and all those things are worth giving up a little bit of autofocus performance for, in my opinion. In terms of Fuji, the cameras and lenses are actually very, very good price as well. So for people looking at investing in their first mirrorless system, I'd definitely recommend the Fuji X-T4. For people who invested in Canon or Sony, particularly in the full frame variants, um, it's gonna be a harder decision, I think. But here's where I stand on it. The X-T4, particularly with the 18 to 55, is probably one of the most versatile camera lens setups around right now. It's a camera that you can take on holiday and get all some stills and videos quite easily. Then you can take it to a wedding videography shoot um, and get some awesome 10-bit F-log footage to grade. Uh, then you can take it to a corporate shoot and use it professionally. But I'm already invested in Sony, so what's the deal? At the moment I've got two A7 3s, uh, two Tamron zooms and two Sony primes. But we're stuck in lockdown, there's little to no paid work coming in, and so I'm not doing as much filming. So where I stand is Sony better bring out something soon, because if they don't bring out something by the time I've started work again, I'll probably invest in the X-T4 um, and the 18-55 lens to start off with um, for a nice little third camera to take around with me on holidays and to add to my selection when I'm filming weddings. But if Sony does come out with something before my work starts kicking off that has 4K60 um, and a flippy screen, it might sway me not to invest in the Fuji system. Overall though, this is definitely a powerhouse and deserves a lot of respect. If you're looking for a new camera or a new camera system, then definitely put the Fuji X-T4 at the top of your list. Anyway, that's it from me. My name's Chris Spice. I do lots of videos on camera gear and tech. So if you're into that sort of stuff, then be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, smash that thumbs down button twice. I'll be doing another video on the Fuji X-T4, um, specifically on the stabilization. So if you wanna see that, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.